Welcome, everybody. It's time once again for the next chapter with Charlie Hedges. As he explores turning the page on his life and yours. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Paul. You know, here we are. 2021 is done. Uh, It was, shall we say, or has been a challenging year. Uh, Today, our dear friend Terry Hershey is with me to discuss our end-of-year thoughts. But you know what? I am choosing not to focus on the endless conversations and issues concerning COVID and our tiring national crisis of divisiveness. And instead, Terry and I plan to discuss 2021, reviewing it through a much more personal lens, a lens that is focused on what we each have learned and experienced this year and plan to take into next year. So with that, let's bring on our good friend, Terry Hershey. Yo, Hirsch. What's up, amigo? Hi, Charles. Well, if I have my vote, I'd, it, I'd rather talk about politics. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, you know, I, I, think, I think we would have to probably, the cent- well, now there's no such thing as censorship. But with, with your feelings about it, the language would be quite colorful. Quite colorful. 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 Yes, colorful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we could uh, we could get into that, you know, and and you know, I'm 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 not as far right as you are far left, but we do have differing opinions. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. You know, and you know what I think? I think for it's really it's really important that you know I think people need to know you and I are best of friends. We can talk. We can take different sides, and we can get really into our talks and, and disagreeing, but it does not, you know, the beauty, Terry, is it does not, at least uh, I, we have not seen it, it does not impact our relationship, that we can, we can have good discussions without having fights between us. And if we could only run our country more that way, that would be a highlight for me. Uh, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I mean, the, the the tragedy is we put a moral price tag on the words right and left, so then we end up using it as a label to dismiss dismiss the person and rather than just talk about the issue. For example, if you just made it an issue, literally an issue, in other words, we have this $10, how should we spend it? In other words, you have an idea how to spend it, I have an idea how to spend it. and then But once you put a moral price tag on which opinion you have, then you get in trouble. That's a brilliant the, insight. The conversation, because, because it is a conversation is, about about how to spend the money is a conversation. Yeah, and we have it. So, in other words, you and I aren't at stake in terms of our well being with each other. It's just about the ten bucks and how we spend it. And 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 the nice thing about it is because it's the ten bucks and how we spend it, or a trillion. In other words, we can we can yell at each other because we haven't attached a label, a moral price tag label to it. That's a really good. That's the insight. part that tr- that's the part that troubles me, and it's not not a political thing. Now I'm talking now is from the church is how so many people are now, uh, uh, you know, how we so we eat so we so easily dismiss others, uh, just carte blanche dismiss them, and then of course then God has to be on our side, so then God dismisses them, of course, too. You know. Yeah, it, it, any any uh, any Lamont said. Um... Uh, something about the one sure thing we know we're not aligned with God is when we feel that God hates the same people we do. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and God's not in that business. So, Hirsch. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> no, she's not. You've been reading Julian? <laughs> well, you know what? That's what's so fascinating is, is so many people think that these are modern issues, you know, the, the feminist issues. Some of the great mystics, the whole thing about that is awesome. Yeah, it's but just, you know, but the, the feminist is, thing is an anachronism. You know, to them, you know, there was no feminine it's a, it's a, issues. You no, know, it's a se. bigger picture of God. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah, she writes wonderfully yeah. on it, and she writes not only on the um, feminine aspect of God, but the feminine aspect of Jesus, that Jesus has a whole feminine component, and and that is unique, I think, even in our in today's society. That she's uh, 
She's quite strong on that. Yeah, and, and then, we, like you know, we have the brilliant mystic women. And then Teresa, you know, all she had to fight against the males, you know, it was, um, you know, we have, we have so many examples of, well, not so many. We have a handful of examples of strong Christian women that promoted the femininity of the divine. Right. Okay. So let's get this show on Ready. the road. Here, here, here's what I'm here, here. Here's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking. First of all, we chatted a bit earlier today, and you told me of your adventure this morning, and and uh, on the golf course. And I think your morning experience. It just occurred to me as I was working through our our podcast today that your experience just might be a snapshot of the way 2021 has treated most of us in general. Tell us, tell us about your time on the golf course this morning. It's fun. So uh, you mean about the hole in one I shot? <laughs> <laughs> I believe if you shot a hole in one, that would have come up sooner. I, th- I would have told you earlier, yeah. Yeah, and I think it would have come up sooner yeah. on the podcast as well. Yeah. I walk the golf course. I have a push cart, three wheels, but you push it. Put you push it, uh, and because you uh, you, uh, you push, you don't you pull. Watch. You don't pull it. You push it. You push it. Okay. They have them now that are on a, on a battery and a button push, and they go by themselves. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's, it's God forbid you might. Can you get, God forbid that you push it anyway. God forbid you get exercise. Um, yeah, so you, yeah, you push it, you don't pull it, and uh, so uh, the, the, there's there's nothing flat about the landscape here, which is great. It was a it's a rainy day here, a serious rainy day, meaning sideways rain and wind, but you still play golf. So uh, 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 on a hole where the green is way up on a hill, you push the your cart up there and. Uh, my umbrella is attached to the cart, of course, but I'm going to putt a golf ball, and so I leave my cart where it's going to be just fine and focus so much on putting. I turn around and see that my cart has already been wheeling down a 70, about a 70-yard embankment into the pond. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's not funny. Actually... My first thought was, um, you know what's interesting? This is actually a good, uh, on that cart is a brake that you push. All you have to do is push the brake. It won't move. Did I push the brake? No, I did not. In other words, I had available to me something that I just did not use, which is characteristic of the kind of stuff we, we have when we go through shitty years. We have stuff available to us personally that we just do not use. And our carts fall in the pond. So you, um, so are, are, are carts and vaccines becoming synonymous now? Um, you mean stuff we don't use? Or <laughs> yeah, use? stuff we don't use. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just talking about, I'm, I'm just talking about things that we have inside just for personal balance and well-being. In other words, we assume that our cir- the circumstances have, uh, have. We assume that they're the whole truth of who we are. Uh, and because people say, I don't know if I can get through this. In other words, we, we have, no, we have uh, no sense of what is available inside of us to walk through difficult times. You know, you, you, have, you have just struck upon where we're thinking similarly. You've just struck upon much of what I, I wanted to talk about today, but that, but that is it, that, that we have available to us so many internal resources that we fail to access because we are so interested in something else. What else are we interested in? Why is it that we don't access these tools or, or ways of thinking? Well, or, see, because the irony, the, the irony, of course, is that... Uh, Starting with 2020, 
what because all of a sudden the pandemic was so so out of the norm and uh, so many things were were uh, were now abnormal not normal taken away and and, and because we didn't we didn't look inside for what we wanted to be or what we wanted to value or who we were. We assumed our entire well-being was predicated on what was populating normal or abnormal. I mean, that's the interesting part. And so you found people realizing, wait a minute, there's some stuff that I've learned to value about myself I didn't even know existed before. Even though the stuff around me is crazy. In other words, but the crazy isn't the only thing about my world that defines who I am. And and is it not in the midst of the craziness? It is it's about change and disruption and well it's annoying, discomforting, disruptive. There is also an opportunity through dealing through the midst of this for us to probe into our inner selves and see how we are dealing with it, how we can better deal with it, what tools we already have inside and what what we need inside to to focus on not the not so much the causes of the outside situation, but focus on how am I perceiving it, what am I doing about it, and how am I how am I how am I using this to live a more intentional and more meaningful life? Well, yeah, I mean, the last part, the more intentional, more than, in other words, I start to, I start to make a list of what is, what is really important to me. Um, I mean, a lot of people who, 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 who lived crazy, crazy, hectic lives realized, wait a minute, I don't have to do that. <laughs> I don't have to. Distraction is, is and busyness is, a, is some sort of uh something to be proud of, you know, that I put on my resume. Um, yeah. I don't have to do that. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, the story that you're, you're so fond of telling that I love and, or the story, but the theme that you talk about, um, of keeping score and our businesses, our busyness, one way we keep score and we evaluate, our, evaluate ourselves based on that score rather than are we in concert with our soul? Right. Right, right, right. I mean, it's, it, I'm, I'm reading a, a lot of wonderful things uh, about um, that people are, you know, they're given the chance to, to, to reevaluate what matters. There's, um, I did a, uh, the you know my Sabbath moment. I do a daily one now, but the Lynn Twist uh, writer, I use her quote t- today. She said, "The problem is not simply simply that we work too much, now the, but really the affirmation here is that we live in a world where our identity is attached to uh, what we do. In right. other words, um, and and we where, that's where we park it." Um, that's why it's really strange when your when your job is messed up, your vocation is messed up, you're unemployed, et cetera, because now you don't have an answer to the question, right? What do you do? And so, but I love this. The problem is not simply that we work too much. The problem is that we are working for the wrong we reward. And this is the sentence: we are paid in the wrong currency. I like that. What if we're going to expand our definition of wealth to include those things that grow only? in time time and then she goes through a list time to walk in the park time to take a nap time to play with my children time to play with anybody's children time to read a good book time to dance time to put your hands in the garden cook playful meals paint sing meditate keep a journal etc cetera, etc cetera. you know, make the list my question for people is what kind of currency have you have you learned defines wealth for you now that is better for your heart and your soul, that put that that keeps your blood pressure down and brings a smile to your face. Tell me about your currency. What 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 is your currency based on? The Terry Hershey um, currency. Actually, the, that that last sentence is really what it is. It's 
it brings a smile to my face, but more in the sense of, um, of a sense of, of almost surprise, curiosity. And I mean, you know, driving down the street or just going to the post office, it's crazy weather here. Crazy. I mean, yeah, you guys and, got a lot uh, of rain, right? Well, no, the, I mean, the pretty intense wind and the clouds are rolling through the sky, but I'm driving down the, and then, and right in front of me, there's a big, big rainbow. Well, I, I stopped the car. I mean, I didn't really think it's somebody behind me, but I didn't really matter. That's currency right there. In other words, uh, I, you find a place where you're, where you're giddy, where you're glad to be alive, even if you're never going to tell about it. So that's, that to me is just one moment that grounds me one moment that makes me stop the car of what, whatever lurches me forward. You said we don't even need to tell about it. I think, is it not possible that the telling about it goes all the way back to keeping score about how cool I am? Do you, do you respect me for how cool I am? Am I accepted? Because, you know, being accepted and, and yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh, because because okay. So, yeah, you're right. Because if I was going to tell about it, it wasn't just a rainbow. It was the biggest rainbow anybody <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no one has seen a bigger rainbow than this. You know, is the word conflating 2020 and 2021? I can't tell the difference between them. One was a little more at home, and the other one is more a little more out. But they are both very restrictive and fear-based and all, all sorts of things, but I've kind of put them together so I, I, I lose my years of 2020 and 2021 in what year did what happen. But I think one of the positives of COVID is it has at least provided us an opportunity, whether we take advantage of it or not, but to truly take a deep dive and reevaluate our lives reevaluate what's important to us and what really means something to us because pre-covid we were very much into what you were discussing about about what is that what is the capital or what is how do you define wealth that that we're involved in and you are and you and I are both very strongly into internal drivers rather than external you know, is it nice to have money? Heck yes, it's nice to have money. But it is not, it does not make or break us. Um, no. I, before, before COVID, um, well, in, in the sense that it shut everything down, before that, when I did my workshops, because I lost, you know, I lost all my work. Yeah. Yeah, and that could be okay. So that's my evaluation for the year. Actually, the irony is, I loved it. I mean, you don't get paid. It didn't really matter. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, and look it's and look how it turned. Look how it turned out for you. I mean, you you, you, you don't you don't have you don't have your big five forty years. I didn't have to get on an airplane every week or every other week. Yeah, first time. And I you know and I wrote three books and I uh, you know. I loved it. And, uh, you know, as an introvert during COVID, the biggest thing we had to deal with, with COVID being over, was how are we going to tell all those people we promised we'd get together with them after this? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just do like we do everything else. We live in denial. What conversation? What are you, what are you talking about? But before before that, I'd, I'd be in workshops, and I, you know, because I do... My workshops are about self-care, you know, sanctuary and uh, uh, refueling, you know. That, and so you you have them raise their hands. How many of you feel a little burnt out? Well, you know, most hands go up. Or how many of you uh, have been exhausted? Most hands go up. How many of you, uh, you put too much on your list? Uh, you know, you know how this goes, right? And 100% of people in the room say, "I want a, I want a life that's different." Well, boom. March 2020, life was radically different. And then my point was, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. Because they got, all of a sudden, they, in other words, that was their prayer, Charlie. They wanted that. And so 
Now you have an opportunity to say, oh, okay, wow, what really is important to me? What does matter? What part of relationships matter to me? What part of connecting with certain people matters to me? What part of looking out for people who are vulnerable matters to me? You know, what, what part of getting ahead or having enough matters to me? What part of not needing that extra thing to prove something matters to me? You know, it's kind of been exponential. I'm going to make up a word. It's kind of been exponentialized because before COVID, you and I could have this exact conversation and say those exact same things. You know, that was kind of right. where we have been headed for several years now, uh, away from external external measurements and into more internal measurements. But there was something right. in that forced, in that in that that forced sort of seclu- seclusion and solitude, that just just expanded the power of what we were talking about and the need for what we were talking about. Yes. Because it eliminated, you you know, you you didn't have a lot of choices. You eliminated all of those other opportunities, and, and, and you really had a choice to just incessantly bitch and whine about it or to say, what can I learn and do from it? Now, you said earlier, much earlier in the show that you said there are several things that you have learned from this and that you have experienced. Do you recall saying that? No. <laughs> I, 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 Tell, well, give me give me an know, idea of a couple. Not, you know what it is? It's just a, it, actually it was a complete confirmation of everything that I believed in my gut. It was one is that that. Um, what the world did for us is something I'm going to steal from Mary Oliver now. Mary Oliver. Is That's okay. It's a good, a good she's place. A, she, she's a saint. Agreed. She's remarkable. But in one of her poems, she just says what she called instructions for life. This is right in the middle of her poem. Instructions for life. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. And so for my work during my, a lot of it was Zoom work, but I've worked with lots of people where they're having, you know, not fun times in their organizations uh, trying to manage all this. And so my theme has been called emotional and spiritual hydration. In other words, we've, we've become emotionally dehydrated because we, we don't know how to grab onto what really matters. And so I've used those three things. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. And and the pay attention is the, um, my, you know, and I'm one of my book titles, The Power of Pause. There was a, there was a part of me, and I had, to, I had to fess up to this. You know, I would I'd, uh, moan about the fact that I had to be on a plane all the time, and yet it made me feel important, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With your, you got bumped to first class. You had the, you yeah, had the suites man, in the I hotels. Somebody, I, and... I should show you my. I should show you my cards, my platinum and, and multi platinum. Man, this is awesome. But that, yeah, that's the whole point. Is that then you realize? Wait a minute. I, and but I was going to preach the, the power of pause, and and so then it happens to you, and you realize, wait a minute, th- this pause thing isn't so bad. I'm a little scary, but I'm glad for it. Because, and that is this, that the pause for me is, and so then I have to ask the question, because it's always been for me, do I practice what I preach? And the answer is no, which is why they call us preachers and not practitioners. And <laughs> so then, <laughs> that's good. So, but then I had to ask, what does it mean now for me during this pause to practice self-care? What does that look like? So and tell so me, what does that, that look was, like, Terry? What does self-care look like in the Terry Hershey family? I take a nap every day. Okay. I take a nap every day. I, I, I read because reading feeds me. I walk because walking. I walk three miles a day. If I'm golfing, I walk five miles a day. I walk every day because that 
that feeds me. Okay. I spend time in, in, yeah, in my relationship with Nancy and my conversations. We have our times. In other words, it's, it's, it, you know, as an Episcopalian, you know this. You have you have liturgies of your life. Liturgies of life, that fuel, yes. That that fuel you, and and if the liturgies take care of you, uh, and make and then then that's a powerful thing, and I can tell when those are not a part of my day or week. How has it impacted your relationship? And then, and then, of course, I write Sabbath moment, which keeps me sane. So I spend two hours every day writing Sabbath moment. So I'm writing Sabbath moment every day, and then there's an hour of every day that I give over to emails of people who write to me. Well, that's an awesome thing. Tell me how your relationship with Nancy is is different than it was pre-COVID, is it? Yeah, because um, uh, when you when you're a when you're a um, when you're a traveler, you're not you. You don't necessarily live at home a lot. Yeah, and so then when you're not a traveler, you do, and so then you learn that dance of living at home, and 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 then you learn that you like each other. And, and it begins uh, as an awkward and, dance, does it not? Yeah, because then you have to you have to figure it out. The wonderful thing about it is, as you know, is that you get to, at one point, you have to look in the mirror and realize you get to make choices about what the liturgies are. In other words, you're not at the mercy of, you're not a victim of the liturgies. You get to choose. That is, unlike a religious service, we can reformulate our liturgies based on right. our awareness, our current awareness, which is always in growth or, you know, either forward, forward growth or backward growth. And, and we, can, we can make decisions, you know, because I'm, I'm very much like you. I, I think, you know, there was a time, and, and this sounds almost heretical to say these kinds of things, but my wife said, and this was uh, more in the middle, this was more end of 2020 if you know as i said the years run together so i'm it's hard but my wife said you know as a couple covid has been good for us and yeah. you know it, yep. It, yep. It, it sounds like yep. a terrible thing to say but it but no, it, it's a, it, go ahead it's it's going to it's going to be one or the other and people found that with relationships that if if i'm at and not at the mercy of but if i think my circumstances determine what my life is, then I'm assuming I don't have as many choices as I do. But now all of a sudden, if the circumstances are shrunk and I realize the choices are there in mine, it's like, I don't have anyone to blame but me. Well, right. there's two ways to go with that. One is, wait a minute, that wasn't as fun as I thought, or wow, look what I've been missing. This is awesome. Uh, un- unfortunately, many and I would say of us, because it's very, quite normal, find somebody else to blame, and that is our partner. Yeah, so so yeah, the blame yeah. is really on me, but I don't want to accept that because my partner is at fault, so I don't have to change. I They have to change. And what you're yeah. suggesting is it takes a whole new look at me and say, I have to be the initiator. And we're always waiting for someone to initiate kindness to us. What if we don't wait? What if we begin by starting to initiate that kind of whole, whole different sort of look? You know, with my wife and I, we learned something. And, you, you know, we have a, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate we have a solid marriage, very, very solid marriage. And our marriage is excellent right now. But we've gone through years of trials, as, as you know that marriages can go through years of trials. And they were very, 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 very difficult. But y- you know one of the big things that I learned and my wife learned in this process is the value of acceptance as she is and a great reduction in judgmentalism. I don't expect her to be like me. And so I want to understand more of why she's doing what she's doing, the value of what she's doing. 
and you know in our marriage and 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 we found that acceptance as we accept and and not just say it's not the you know the decision to agree not to, to what is it to a to agree to disagree it's not that it's right. it, it's it, it's a bonding it's it's a mutuality and when we both are accepting and caring all the bullshit seems to fall kind of behind kind of fall in the background and and the delight in our relationship is superb terry just because we choose to accept the other as they are and and if if some things are not working, then we can talk about it sanely. You know, what can we do to make this better? And and it's it's a right. mutual decision. It's not one person coming in and saying, you know, if you don't start taking out the trash, then, you know, we're going to have a big trouble. Well, I've been to your house, and I know who takes out the trash, Charlie, so. Yeah, me. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> I do, I, I do, because I get up earlier than you. <laughs> well, that's because you got to get rid of all the bottles of wine you drank when I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. So I'm still interested, because I got a list of things that um, I felt I have learned, and and yeah. and, it, and, it, and it's... And the subject fits into something you and I have talked about for decades, and that's about the few things that matter. I've always, right. I always, you know, Kent Kilborn is the one who came up with that. Do you remember that? And, of course. And that was just a brilliant idea. And what I want to do is I want to take a break, and then I want to come back, and I want to talk about the few things that matter that I've learned that matter to me, and I'm really interested in the few things that matter to you that are that are really practical in 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 your life that have that have impacted your life significantly. Can we do that? Mm, sure. Okay. Hi there, this is Charlie Hedges, and you're listening to The Next Chapter with Charlie. And we have, you know, my one of my favorite guests and a friend to the podcast and to the show and a friend to, to all is, uh, um, you know, I can call him the Reverend Terry Hershey, but, but he, and, and, and he indeed is, he's a reverend of grace. And um, I just enjoy our conversations, and I think we're on a on a pretty personal and deep path. And so let's talk about post or during COVID, what we learned about the few things that matter. So, so I have a handful of things. Do you want me to start or do you want to start? No, you can start, but uh, do, do Kent's entire quote. Oh, I don't know uh, Kent's entire quote, so I so please tell me. Yeah, there are, there are only a few things that really matter, but those that do matter, matter immeasurably i never heard that i love it yeah i figured you would yeah yeah because they they really the few things that matter and they matter immeasurably is 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 wonderful and so you know i have this sort of uh convoluted list of things and and i and i put on a high level my marriage is way better and i explained that's because we were forced to talk and we were forced to make attempt to get along and to love each other, honor each other, respect each other, accept each other, because we realized if we didn't, it was going to be quite hell living together. And, you know, when that's the only person you're truly in much contact with, living a life of hell together is not very enticing. And the second thing that has been extraordinarily powerful in, in my life, and it's come across in all our podcasts, and that is my inner spiritual life has blossomed. And that's because I have had time for solace, for solitude and silence. 
that's, you know, I have not had, I, I was not hit with the busyness and that I had, you know, I, I, I could devote, you, you know, honestly, a couple or more hours a day to that, to that contemplative life. And, and it has been just so utterly powerful. And then the third thing I wrote is that I've become much clearer on the few things that matter. So I will, I will just list, list them and see if they resonate with you. The first one I already discussed, and that's not just of my wife, but of everybody I meet. I work at acceptance rather than judgment. Well, I'm, not, I'm just going to say the... Um... You, I mean, the Mary Oliver thing, pay attention, uh, be astonished, tell about it. Well, tell about it implies the pay attention and be astonished isn't something just in for me alone. In other words, I have to make a shift somewhere from I to we. There has to be a we. If there's not a connection or we, then, and you, your sentence, make a tent together. Use that one, Charles. I'm going to steal it and not give you credit. Look, it's really good. Yeah. Make it together. It's at some point there has to be a we, and and um, and that's the thing. Well, that's another conversation we can have because that's the one about religion and politics and everything else. There has to be a we. So that's an extraordinary thing. But the first your first one, stillness, is the whole thing that uh, you know. Pay attention. The power of pause. That a remarkable thing. And of course, you call yourself a mystic, and mystic. The translation of mystic is to be still. It's about stillness, because you give yourself permission to see what you may not, what you would not have seen had you not been still. You know the weird thing about it? It doesn't call for reading or journaling. It calls for just frickin' sitting there and doing nothing and pondering about essential things in life, pondering and pondering about what's important in my life. And, and I would add to the, to that list, one thing for me, which has been an affirmation. And, and so then I ended up writing a journal this last year. Uh, I mean, the journal was published called the gift of enough. And the whole point was to help people re- realize that they could literally live each day whether alone or not alone, in stillness or not. In other words, they could live it from gratitude because what they bring to that moment is enough. And you've learned that. I mean, you can sit in stillness and you don't feel you don't feel any sense of, oh my God, what do I have to do here to make this worthwhile? You 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 start with gratitude by I am glad to be here. Oh, it it is it, it's it's, and and that's and that and then that's a a, a low level surprising gift from it because it it is it is so comforting it is it is and it just puts my life together and the second thing i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna just mention to you uh, i have a list of things but i'm going to mention well i'll I'll mention my list and I'll, i'll just do it and then see what see which ones grab you in this silence and solitude i have learned uh, the value of discipline. I cannot live my life intentionally and importantly in um, without discipline. And and you know my spiritual life, my solitude, my silence, those fit into certain times of day. So my liturgy of the day, they fit into a liturgy of the day. And if I do not fulfill it in the liturgy of the day, if I do not spend my 7:30 until 9:30 or 10 o'clock in the morning in my in my my own liturgy my own ritual it doesn't hurt me for a day but after two or three days I can I can sense there's a difference in myself there's a there's an uptightness and there you know the judgmentalism kind of jumps in and the criticism jumps in but when I am but when I am alone with the Spirit of God, um, it, it, it is very powerful. Another one, a fresh perspective on the needs of those around me. I am now thinking no longer, why is that SOB acting this way? My question is, is what has happened to that person that causes them to act this way? Because they don't choose to be an ass. 
that is not their goal. Well, you know, maybe some people, but for most people, that's not their goal in life. It's a, it's a protective mechanism. And as long as I try to search for what that protective mechanism is and gives me a new perspective, I have a whole new perspective on, on those people. And I have several examples. Uh, another one is I've listened better. And my final one is that is always, as you know, has always been two themes in my life, but they're ever more essential now, and that is love and kindness. That you you just you just don't go wrong, and and I think my isolation has forced me to focus on those things and 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 pay heed to them and feed them. You know, it's feeding the the is it the light wolf and the dark wolf or whatever. It's it's feeding it's feeding the 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 light wolf. Do any of any of those five things or six or whatever do they ring any bells with you? Yeah, that's the Native American story about whatever you you know whichever whichever wolf you feed the most exactly. Right, right, right. Yeah, but what about um, those subjects of acceptance and discipline I, and? Well, discipline. Yeah, discipline. Discipline. I've always had a a more you know difficult yeah. reaction to that. Yeah, but but uh, you know. But you, but, but Terry, let, 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 let me interrupt and say. You you are very disciplined. There is no way you can write a podcast every day and do all the things you do without discipline. I know, but I, it's just that word that <laughs> I if, know. I don't walk my, if I don't walk my three to five miles a day, I'm not in a good shape. I'm yeah, but that's discipline to do that. That's, now, now it's coming out yeah. of desire. It doesn't mean discipline has to come. Discipline doesn't have to be this negative. Oh, I'm doing stuff I don't want to do. But yeah, no, uh, no, I, no, it's not discipline, Charlie. It's pure skill and performance. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, yeah, ding! Discipline. Keeping score. Discipline. Listen. Discipline still carries with me that same thing with the church overload from when I was a kid. But I am very. I agree with that. Is that you have to be intentional, very intentional, and I agree wholeheartedly. I'm finding that to be a major kindness. word, intentional, a major word. Yeah, the very thing about the kind, because intentional means you're not a victim and you're not the mercy of. You choose, which means um, that's the thing about people who are, who are literally, I mean, the anger and the vitriol, the people who, they're the ass part that comes out in so much that we see now, um, it just shows you how people have not, the, the, the woundedness when something breaks as soon as the breakage as you don't if you don't own the breakage the brokenness the first thing you and pam did was say okay uh our schedule broke here but the two of us are going to own it but if you don't own that you have to hate somebody because somebody made it break and then craziness so i i wholeheartedly agree with you that uh, um, I'm, I'm, I don't want to take it. I don't want to bite if someone is, is a certain way with anger. I, I see my one of my favorite phrases is the permission to be a non-anxious presence. And I would add to that, I like the permission to be a non-anxious presence, and I like to add to that the freedom to say no. I have people when I get to, you know, the political people, that all they want to do, not all they want to do, but their big issue is talking politics and COVID and all that. And and, and I've gotten to a point where I just say, I don't play. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm not going to talk about it. And and they say, why not? And I say, well, first of all, there's a sense in which I I care about the situation, but I don't care that we're not going to solve anything and it's not going to get us anywhere and it's not going to promote our relationship. And so Mm -hmm. I just, I refuse to go there. They just have such a hard time, Terry, with that. They just say, you know, like I'm a, I'm a heartless person. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a brainless person. I don't care about what's going on. No, no. I care more about what's going on right now here at this table between you and me than I care what's going on with our political system i'm much yeah, more interested and you can in say that. you can say you know that you know what you are so right i am both heartless and brainless but you will notice that my blood pressure is 
37 points below yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have one final question because we do have to go, and we've, we've done some things, but I, I have a question that may take you a bit to answer, and I really want to promote because it is so, Sabbath moment is so brilliantly done. You are such a fine writer, and yet every story continues to be unique, but there is a common theme or multiple common themes that run throughout it. So let's let's give our listeners an idea of what Sabbath moment is, because, it, you, you know, Sabbath moment reflects on so much of what we're talking about. So I have three sort of questions around it. What is Sabbath moment? Why do you write it every single day? And what is it you will hope to accomplish with those daily entries? The hope to accomplish is 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 not is not. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a story about the hope to accomplish, because you know I give lectures, obviously, and even back in the day, remember when you were at South Coast or wherever you were, and I'd come do talks at your church. But back in the day, we had sort of assignments about what we were going to talk about. Well, when I go some places, people say, "What's your topic?" and I'll tell them, and and. My favorite question they ask me is, but what will be the takeaway? (laughs) What will my people learn after two hours of listening to you? And I used to, I used to be a little unnerved by that. In other words, I wanted to come up with an answer. You know, there's gotta be something. And, but then I realized the reality is, and, and I give them an honest answer. I say, well, there, there are a few things about the subject that I hope they take away. But I can guarantee you this, at the end of the two hours, they'll be glad to be alive. Well, that's, is that not a takeaway? I, that's my point. My point, is, it's, my point is, it's a paradigm shift about what we call a takeaway. Can't being glad to be alive be enough? So, so do, I, do, I have, do I have to pass a test about something I, quote, learned? A lesson? And so the answer to your question is, and this is, I'll read this to you, because this is what I write at the bottom of every Sabbath moment, and that is this. I write Sabbath moment because I want to live with a soft heart, and that's not easy in this world. I want to create a place for sanctuary, empathy, inclusion, compassion, and kindness, a space where we all can be refueled to make a difference. That's, so That's well, why I write Sabbath Moment. That's so well put. And and I think in, in our times right now that is so essential. And as we as we wrap up, I you know, I want to get it clear. I, I'd I'd like all of our listeners to at least go on to your site and read a couple of Sabbath moments just to see you're a magnificent storyteller. And you always have a kernel of thought that you, you know you you lead you leave reading Sabbath moment thinking and feeling and and it's all about it is all about love and kindness and you are you know you are the 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 proponent of grace and just the power of grace in our lives it, it it's it's brilliant I think this has been. I think this has been for me an interesting an interesting conversation that we that we didn't have to go into all of the 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 the, the genuine true crap of covid and to say what we could learn from it and what we can continue to learn from it as this thing is who knows where it's going. Yeah, but you know what the great thing Charlie is is that if I practice the things on the list that you and I talk about if I practice those things I make better I make better decisions when it comes to stuff that I have to make relative to health and politics and religion. I do. Terry, you know, to compliment you that you are very consistent. You have maintained consistency to your inner being, your inner core, to the degree that you understood it. You know, it it took as all of us it yeah. took years to begin to understand it and and I think we're hitting the age. I know I'm hitting the age where there's less knowledge growth and experiential growth going on. I've, I've, I've learned a lot. You know, I've, I've thought of Richard Rohr at 77 said, I've quit reading. 
He just says, I know everything I need to know, <laughs> but I've got to practice more. So I, I just need to, to take what I already know and practice it and get better and better at practicing it. And, and I like that. And, 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 and I think as we grow older, there is a sense of where people say, oh, I've, I've kind of heard this before, but, but has it impacted your life yet? Have you changed your life? I think it's really important. So um, God bless Good. you, and, and, and I, I really appreciate what you're doing. So, Thanks, Charles. Always, always good. Terry Hershey, my friend, um, thank you for chatting with me today. That's usually responded with, gosh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, gosh, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so remind us of how listeners can read Sabbath Moment as well as send you a question. When they go on your website, they send you a question, and you answer every single email, don't you? Yeah, I actually do. Um, so it just, you just my name, Terry Hershey, terryhershey.com. Oh, it's not TD yeah, Hershey? Yeah. It's just terryhershey.com? Terryhershey.com, yeah. Okay, Terry Hershey. And, and, and then they can sign up for Sabbath Moment. And, and there's other things. There's other audios, and there's several e-courses that I've made them all available for free. I did that during COVID, and so they're all there. Oh, I know, and yeah. and and we won't get into that. How I told you, you should charge for them, but um, I know. But anyway, but but uh, you just go to TerryHershey dot com, and I'm and, and Hershey about stories, Charlie, because it's stories. It's really uh, I'm not. I, I, I'm, people ask if I lecture. No, I tell a story because in the story is you can put yourself in the story, and then you can unpack all those things that matter. Yeah. It's brilliant. I, I, I just encourage everybody listening, give it a couple of days and read a couple of days and see if it fits your, your zone. But it's, um, it's a very, very, very popular post, and it's very, very encouraging and gives you tons to think about and, and gives you solace for living a life on this planet. You do a great job, my friend. Thank you. Okay, I want to thank all our listeners for tuning in to the next chapter and reminding you that you can get in touch with me, Charlie, at thenextchapter.life. And until next, this is Charlie Hedges signing off. Bye for now.